All right, here we go. This is a uh, video that will tell us how to do the stock market uh, project for one of the two projects we have this semester. Um, both projects are equally graded in that they're 10% of your final exam. So the first one's our stock market project. This relates to the Honors Econ course. Both of these are requirements to pass the class. And this one, uh, this one's actually been uh, pretty fun through the years and I think uh, something that you guys will kind of enjoy uh, as a way to follow stocks and, and get a feel. One of the things I always say on this is that many of you guys probably own stock, uh, either in your college savings plans or uh, potentially just an account your families have set up. If you're uh, fortunate enough to have a trust fund, there's probably some stocks in there. We'll get into a little bit more of the details of how some of those things work, uh, but many of us probably own um, some stock. We'll also talk specifically about what stock is um, in class prior to us turning this in. I just want to talk about the assignment. Um, so we're not going to go into a lot of details about how stock functions. I'm just going to tell you about the assignment right here, and then in a later thing, we'll see about how this works. Uh, bottom line is, is that you're going to choose uh, five companies that you're going to pick and put into a portfolio that we're going to keep throughout the, mo the most or the majority of the first semester, right, right up until uh, late November. So we're not going to necessarily find the Christmas season in there, but uh, right up before there, because obviously that's when our first semester ends. Um, these, uh, you're going to get a uh, sample amount of money, and, and what's going to happen is I'm going to kind of scroll down here a little bit, and you can see... Um, you can see some of the materials you might need to do this and a little bit of this is you know kind of on you about how you want to store this and we'll talk about the different options but procedurally you're going to keep an individual portfolio all work from the portfolio must be collect, kept, kept in order legibility and neatness are important um, you'll, you'll see this is going to come up when we're tracking stocks um, so along the way you're going to check and see how your stocks are doing those kind of things is when it when the neatness element comes in um, but number two is really the nuts and bolts of the project as far as what you're required to do. So what we're going to do is we're going to give you $10,000 of, you know, plain monopoly money, for lack of a uh, better word. Um, and you're going to choose five stocks with which to purchase. Now, all these stocks have to be found in one of our st uh, major stock market listings, either in the New York Stock Exchange or the NASDAQ Exchange. We'll talk more about those specifically and how they function later, but just to give you an idea, they have to be in one of those two exchanges. Two of the stocks are what we call foundation stocks. What this means is, is that during the course of the project, they cannot be sold. They're, they're sort of your, your, your nuts and bolts of your portfolio. So there are two stocks that you're going to want to keep, and they're, uh, they're just sort of you know, you know, we use the word foundation, but these are the ones you're just really confident are going to be very stable uh, during these uh, three or four months here. You're required to buy $1,500 in each of these. And like I said, you cannot sell them. So $4,500 of your $10,000 portfolio, or excuse me, $3,000, 1,500 times two, will be uh, part of these foundation stocks. In addition, you're gonna buy three more stocks with the remaining amount of your money. At this point, it doesn't matter how much you spend, however you do, need to have $500 spent on each of these. So you can do a couple at 500 and then the rest in a fairly large sum. That, that part of it's up to you, how you blend those last three. The key is, is that we want to get right up next to that $10,000. We'll spend a lot more time on that when we go through the actual purchase price and the purchasing of the stocks. You can buy and sell these three stocks during the course of the um, project. In other words, if you want to sell one day and buy something else or what have you, that's fine. Um, keep in mind, you can never have more than five total stocks in your portfolio. So if you sell two of your, sh uh, of your groupings, you have to buy uh, two new uh, stocks. Uh, you are required to uh, do a buy and sell sheet for every transaction. We'll go into those details on the day we actually buy the stock. I'll show you those. Uh, but for now, just know that you need transaction seats. Um, during the course of the project, you are, I'm going to ask you to make at least one transaction of stock. And so, um, you know, at one point, you're going to have to buy and sell one of the companies you originally purchased. That would be those three, right? The foundation stocks you can't buy and sell, it's those other three. 
there is commission. Um, when you went, go out and buy stock, you, you do have to calculate commission. That's just shown here. We do a 1%, just as kind of a base cost. Uh, we'll talk more about how people are paid for buying and selling stock later on in class, but uh, this just kind of gives you an idea. So if you go out and make a $500 purchase, it's actually going to cost you $505. Same thing in reverse. If you're going to sell stock, uh, you're going to have to subtract 1%. So no matter what happens during the project, you're going to be out your 1% of your purchase prices and 1% of your sales uh, just because of commission. And that's, you know, you're not a broker, so you have to have someone do that for you. Um, uh, we'll, we'll talk a little bit more specifically about what I've got here. You cannot go over the 10000 on your initial purchase. Uh, you need to be uh, really close to that 20 We want you to be with inside $20, so 9000 Nine hundred and eighty dollars to ten thousand is our windows, and we'll talk about that when we get through. Number three is probably the big thing I want to talk about uh, on here because um, this is something that's due fairly soon. Um, when you go out and buy stock, and, and it's not a good idea to just say, "Oh, I want to go buy that." Um, you want to make sure that you pick stocks uh, that you've put a little time into, you've researched, and you figure out uh, maybe you know what, what's the rationale for it. And uh, so we do ask you to complete uh, one page of typed research for each of your stock. And uh, one of the things that you want to do is when you're going through this process, uh, you need to justify this with financial reasoning. Now, this is the first uh, thing that's due. It's due on uh, August 21st or the 22nd, kind of your red or white day uh, student of mine. But uh, the bottom line is, is that you need to go through and determine um, whether or not you feel like these stocks are um, something that would be legitimate. And I'll, I'll tell you right now, there's a couple of two cents here. One is, is that I really recommend, and I think most people that, that tell you to buy stock or would ask you to buy stock would say, buy products that you know work. And if you are a fan of Disney movies and Disneyland and all that kind of stuff, well, you know that that's a fairly successful company. So that's a good place to start. Now, I like Disneyland. But I don't know if they're really that value. You know, what what are they doing right now financially? You know, is there things that they've got to purchase or, or sell? Or I mean, you know, who knows what's going on? Um, and so it's you need to research and find out what's happening. For example, okay, I'm gonna give you two examples here. I'm gonna give you two examples that we're gonna talk about. Um, let's start with uh, Yum Brands. This is a little bit uh, close to me because uh, my wife works at Taco Bell headquarters, and you may or may not know, but Taco Bell is owned by Yum. They own Taco Bell Pizza and Kentucky Fried Chicken. Right here is a, a little bit of thing. I went to the wallstreetjournal.com. This is wsj.com. You can see it up here. This is a really good place for a ton of information on stocks, and some of it, frankly, you're not going to understand. And that's okay right now. We'll, we'll talk about these in, in better detail later. But this will give us an idea. For example, it tells me right now how much Yum Brands is worth. It's actually down a little bit today. Um, but it's been flying mainly because uh, Taco Bell. Taco Bell released um, that new Doritos Locos Taco and went crazy. Um, but what we can do here is we can kind of go through and look for maybe some information relating to what's going on financially, not only with young brands, but maybe in their in their area. For example, you know we have a huge drought in the central part of the United States, and so man, we could have some problems with food costs over the next few months. How's that going to affect Taco Bell and their earnings, right? Because they really can't change prices to reflect that um, in the short term. You know, all these kind of things. And these are listed down here. And you may gain some, some information from this. Um, certainly, you're seeing how this stock has performed in recent uh, time here as far as like how this thing is going day to day. And then here it is literally today. Um, it went up a little bit, and now it's sunk back down a little bit today. This is probably over the weekend. People had purchased some stocks. So this kind of gives you an idea. Another product that you guys may be fairly familiar with, Apple. Uh, this is on a different site. This is called The Motley Fool. Um, it's a stock trading site. I'll, these sites are posted on the MyAlu page to kind of give you some ideas about where to go for research. Um, but these are some ideas about, you know, it kind of gives you some other information financially. So... Um, here's the dividend payments. Here's how many shares are outstanding. Um, Apple in kind of a comparison chart versus the S&P 500. We'll talk more about the S&P 500 later. Um, here's its stock price. You can see significantly higher. Uh, for example, for us, you may only be able to buy a small number of shares of Apple because of its stock price. I mean, it's a huge 
uh, price uh, as far as the value or the current value of, of Apple shares. There's some relativity to that, not a big deal, but it just kind of gives you some ideas. So this is kind of the financial stuff I want you to include. You should mention, you know, what's the range of, of maybe the last 52 weeks? I mean, look at this. In the last year, this stock has gained almost $300 or been fluctuating around $300 depending on when you purchased it. We need to know that. Some of the things that are involved with Apple, obviously, is their tablet products with the uh, uh, iPad 3, which many of you probably have. And, and when is that iPhone 5 going to come out? Now, if you think that's going to come out during our project, if you have some insider information that none of us, none else, none of us have, I, I'd buy it because this stock's going to go up <laughs> when that comes out. That 5 is going to be a, a, a blow-up product uh, for uh, as far as everyone can tell. So those are the kind of things you want to think about. Those are two examples but I want you to just kind of go through. You can click on a couple of these things uh, when you're doing your research. When you turn it in, it's important to just kind of tag. Here's the websites I went to to look for for research. We're not writing a research project, but I do want you to tell me where you got the information from. Okay, those you can see the due dates here. We're gonna do our buy date. You can see those dates listed right here. We'll do those in class. There's a buy sheet. I will show you those. Those are on the MyOLU page. You can look at them. Uh, bottom line is, is that we got to make sure we do our, our computations correctly and that we do everything right. We will do this in class. You will be done with this part of the project literally in class so that I can make sure you do it correctly. Uh, number five uh, item here talks about tracking stocks. Um, you need to track three times a week. I created a tracking sheet for you. It's on my Olu Studio. It's on there for you. You can look. Or if you want, you can kind of create your own. It's basically an Excel document where you're tracking the total value of your stock. So you'll multiply the number of shares you own times how much the value is. If we were to do that for uh, uh, Apple here, if we owned two shares, uh, we would multiply two times this number to get the value of our stock. And we would track that each week. We would keep that going. We'd actually track it three times a week. And you're going to turn those in at the end, the record of your tracking. And we'll also, um, at about halfway through this, uh, the project dates, we will do a test uh, I'll sign off on your tracking. So you do want to keep up to date on that. I'll give you a heads up on it. Um, so that way to make sure you're current. Uh, uh, number six here is that uh, during the course of the portfolio, you're going to do at least, uh, you're going to find two articles about your stocks uh, over the course. Uh, one a set is due here. You can see the due date. Second set's there. Actually, I need to update that. We'll, we'll get the white days uh, added to this. But um, both those dates are here for you, and you're going to want to make sure you get those articles done. Now, on those, what you'll do is uh, you're just going to write a half-page summary of the article, and then you're going to provide the link to the article on that assignment. So uh, that's five, um, uh, art uh, five stocks, so one article per stock twice, uh, once here and once here. You can see these on the bottom of the screen. And then finally, at the end, uh, you'll have a one-page paper uh, kind of reflecting on your experiences. How did you think this? How did this go? Uh, now, the final thing that I'm going to mention here before we uh, kind of wrap up, and I'll show you the rubric, is that any items that you're going to turn in in this uh, project, because we're not asking you to do a ton of writing, is that I do want it, and we're going to change the, the MLA format here a little bit. I do want it in 1.5 spacing. Um, however, the font, the Times New Roman are similar and font size 12, so that, that doesn't change, but I do want 1.5 spacing. Here's your due dates. I have to update, and I apologize that I didn't have this on here, but I will update the uh, white day uh, schedule on there. And then here is the rubric, so you'll know exactly what you're getting uh, for this. The only other item I'm going to mention on the rubric is that um, the total for the government project is the exact same. So basically, these two projects merged together will be your final uh, for this class. We will not take finals in class. Okay? There you go. If you have questions about this, uh, definitely bring them up uh, uh, the day you come back from watching this in class, and we'll, we'll talk about them together. Um, some of the stuff I have to be a little bit vague on because we haven't covered stocks yet, right? I'm giving this video before we've really gone into the details about how stocks function, although that'll be early in the class. Uh, biggest thing is, is that you get an idea about how to do your research and putting together the stocks that you're going to buy. Thank you.